Hey everybody, Lady Liberty Stacker. Um, it's Wednesday, November 3rd, 2021, and I'm back for another video on debunking cast iron mist. What you're looking at here is a skillet that I forgot about, and it actually soaked overnight in the sink. This photo's from when I first soaked it with a dish soap, um, Dawn dish detergent and water, and a, the intention was to soak it for about an hour because I had forgotten about the scrambled eggs as I was cooking them. I was doing many other things at the same time and they kind of stuck on the skillet. So then I'll just soak them, forgot about it, went off and watched TV, did some other things that evening and found them the next morning. I thought, oh my gosh. So I took my uh, non-abrasive uh, blue uh, scrub pad, scrubbed it out really good, dried it off with a towel, dried it on the stove, did a mini seasoning and it was good as new. And you should do a mini seasoning every now and then to continue to build your layers of seasoning. But this was the first skillet that I bought back in 2017. I purchased three of them from an antique shop that needed a complete restore. And you'll see them here. The top one is an unmarked Wagner Ware number three. The one below that is the marked Wagner Ware number six that you were just looking at. Um, and these were done in a self-clean oven back in... Uh, 2017. Don't recommend using a self-clean oven to do vintage cast iron. Uh, you could warp them. Uh, this skillet here was slightly warped. It's uh, not a complete spinner, but it does have some movement and it does affect cooking, but it's still a good user. Um, this is the number three Wagner. It was flat and it seemed fine after I used it in the self-clean oven. And the one underneath that, which is not in this video, is a number eight was in the self-clean oven is fine. Now you see here, there's a little bit of a mark on the skillet. That was some a metal alloy that actually got mixed in with the iron when they poured the skillet. Again, you can see it here. And I just thought that was a rough area that I could wire it out with a wire brush, which is another myth that I'm debunking. Here it is again, after the, seat, the, the pan was stripped. But, um, I did use a wire brush on these to smooth them out. Uh, it was a tutorial by a very popular YouTuber. Um, probably He probably had or has a million subscribers, um, an extensive cast iron collection, hundreds of skillets. I don't know if you knew who I'm talking about. He doesn't do cast iron videos anymore, but he did some restoration videos back in the day. And I thought the guy knew what he was doing. His cast iron was beautiful. And he showed securing it down underneath a cutting board secured by very heavy free weights this is the unmarked number three, as you can see here. And this was the very first one that I wire brushed, not wire wheeled. I don't use a wire wheel on any cast iron. I actually don't wire brush it anymore either. But this was the first restoration video that I did. That's the first time I restored anything too. So it was new for me and I recorded it. But anyways, I did wire, wire brush it very carefully. I didn't want to destroy the integ integrity of the skillet. And this is what it looks like here a wire brush attachment to a standard electric drill. And when you see this skillet, you're gonna see the um, original utensil marks. And I'm gonna show you that one. I'm gonna show you the Wagner Ware number six and show you that doing this very carefully on non-collectible or, or stuff you wanna keep um, isn't gonna create great harm, but the, the um, industry guidelines don't recommend doing this. So I will tell you that, don't do this at home. <laughs> Anyway, the next clip will show you a little bit about from the original clip and we'll go from there. Lady Liberty back here. Uh, I uh, had just cooked the skillets in their seasoning after I rubbed it off a second time after it, it was in 300 degrees for 15 minutes. Did uh, rub down and put it in for two hours so we're gonna see what it looks like this is after one seasoning okay so I'm gonna get them out of the whoo it's still hot ah oh, okay we're gonna get them all out here and see this is my little guy the little skillet this is the uh, the one that was unmarked and this is the Wagner Ware. It's hard to hold the camera and do this at one time, but I'm trying to do that. Oops. Okay, here we go. So this is 
what the Wagner Ware looks like. It's not completely black, but it'll get black over time. But it looks like that after seasoning it. And this is a, a very old pan. It's probably 50 or 60 or older than that. But you can really clearly see the uh, writing on the back now. It's a very smooth surface. You can see the, the glean on it. This is the uh, unmarked one, the 6 inch. Number three, it's an H on there. It's got an H on the back, and it's also got an H on the handle. So I'm really not sure what this is. If anybody watching this knows, let me know. I'll do another seasoning in the morning. I'm going to give the oven a rest today. Uh, I started these all, just took me one day to take it from crusty, rusty pans to uh, partially presentable. Okay guys, I am back. It's today, November 3rd. This is what you're looking at, my current status or condition of these two skillets you saw being restored or pictures of the uh, restore process from 2017. This is the unmarked number three. Six inch skillet. There's the H on the handle and at the base of the bottom. You always see a mold mark, mold maker's mark um, on Wagner's. And on Wagner's you also see the flat and triangular area that, that meets up with the sidewall from the ribbing. If it's a BSNR, the ribbing goes all the way directly to the sidewall. Just a little note there. But you can see this one has been used a lot over the years. It's shiny and black. You can see close up the utensil scratches on it. Uh, that and then there's some part, uh, marks here that are a little bit of pitting from the original skillet. Doesn't impede the cooking at all, but uh, that's the wire wheeling. That was actually wire brush, I should say. Just smoothed it out a little bit, but didn't destroy the integrity of the skillet the way I did it. Then over here we have our Wagner Ware marked number six. Wagner Ware model 1056Q. I've had this in many videos showing cooking and recipes and whatnot. And it has a little bit of a hot spot. You can see where the seasoning is a little bit uh, lighter there. But it's essentially black and shiny, which is what it's going to be after it's you know been uh, very um, heavily seasoned over the years and you can see this little spot there let me come in this way you can see that it was a little metal alloy that must have mixed in with the iron batch when they poured the skillet the skillet's roughly in the 1950s this one in the 1950s before 1960 for sure um, I know that when they started making them in the 1960s 60s, they started stamping made in the USA on them um, not all American manufacturers did that. They didn't have to, I don't believe, but um, it's something that was commonly done. But these are very well uh, preserved after soap and after wire brushing on the initial restoration. I don't think I would actually do that uh, today, especially on vintage cast iron, Griswold, Volrath, etc. But you can see here that it does spin a little bit. It doesn't go all the way around, but it does spin a little bit. And that's why you see the hot spot right there, a little bit of warping, not a lot. You know, so it works perfectly well for me. This one here has a little bit of movement, but it doesn't spin all the way around. It's fairly flat, but you can see it has just a teeny tiny little bit of rock, but this is great for burgers. You just let them warm up for a while smaller skillet about three minutes, a larger skillet three to four, and then even larger four to five. If they're warmed up properly, they're going to cook right. But at any rate, that's what they look like. They hold seasoning. They look good. They cook good, despite the soap and despite the wire brush. Okay, guys, that's pretty much it. I will be back shortly with another video. I'm working on that lodge that I bought. 
All right, guys, have a great day. Remember to give me a thumb up if you like. Leave a comment or question below. Thanks for watching.